New rankings show there are only four free countries left in the entire world, and the United States has dropped to number 25 on this list, tied with a small island country in Africa. Today, I'm gonna to tell you what those four countries are and how you can stay free in a world with less freedom than ever. The freest countries this year are Singapore, Switzerland, Ireland, and Taiwan. That's according to a group called the Heritage Foundation who's been putting out their index of economic freedom since I was a kid. This is what we read around the dinner table when I was growing up and my father said, you should go where you're treated best because the US won't be ranked as highly as it is today. And it turns out 25 years later, he was right because countries like the United States are going down. This is about economics. The index of economic freedom measures how free economies are. Now, I don't agree with everything in these annual reports. Some of the factors are about stuff that the average small business owner will never have to deal with. For example, we ran a small business in Serbia, and yeah, there was an above average amount of paperwork for the kind of countries that we deal in, but we didn't find any kind of corruption or untoward dealings or any of the stuff that you might uh, see if you read these reports. And so for a lot of small business owners, some of the stuff in here is perhaps a little bit overhyped, but it does act for a bellwether. Where are countries moving? And what it shows you is even if you plan on living in your country, you want to diversify to where you're going, where you're treated best with your money. Because if your country isn't one of those four that's totally economically free, it's probably an indication that you want to move some of your bank accounts, some of your investments, to a country that is more free or that at least has more potential. Because if you're not getting total freedom and you're not getting that great of return and you had a lot of regulations, like what's the purpose? Go one direction or the other. Either invest in places that technically aren't as free but they're growing super fast or put your money in wealth havens where they totally pragmatically and transparently protect the wealth that you have. Now let's start with the country rankings. New Zealand has fallen out of the free category, which is 100 points down to 80 points. They missed it. They're not a 78.9, which puts them in the mostly free category with about 22 other countries. So not total slouches, but they have flown out of being totally free. A lot of Western countries this year fell out, reduced their scores. What happened? Things like property rights went down. Judicial effectiveness went down. Government integrity went down. Uh, tax burden, government spending, fiscal health, those things went down in New Zealand. Business freedom and labor freedom went up, trade freedom went up. Now these scores are all relatively high. I mean, the country is fifth out of 172 different countries. So that's not like it's totally bad, but it shows that ever so slightly they're moving in the wrong direction. And what we tell you here is these changes happen at the margins, but marginal changes can have a big impact. I'm looking at momentum, I'm looking at direction. Am I gonna avoid New Zealand entirely because it's now number you know, five and it's just dropped into the top category? Not exactly, but we're seeing a trend throughout this year's entire report that just shows a lot of countries going in the wrong direction. Estonia is now also back at number six in the mostly free category. Uh, previously, those had both been free. And so Estonia is a very popular place for a lot of nomadic kind of businesses. Here's what I look at, and here's what I don't understand how some of these things uh, come out. New Zealand, for example, you can't be a foreigner and go and buy a house. Now, you can say that's good public policy and things are getting too expensive. We have to protect our citizens. That's great. But you have to say that's not entirely a free economy. People want to have their cake and eat it, too. And that's not how it works. You don't have an entirely free economy if you don't let people come and buy property. And so... Obviously, some of the places that we tell you that are available to live, you can't buy property. We never said those are the world's freest economies. We said they're good places to live. And so you want to look at every aspect of a country and take the best parts and leave the rest. Let's talk about the losers. Literally every uh, mostly free country, uh, so those with 79.9 down to 70 points, with the exception of the UAE, which gained... Uh, and Uruguay, which gained. So two countries that are tax-friendly, open for immigration, ready for nomad capitalists to go. Uh, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden, Australia, Germany, all down. And some of these, you know, pretty big numbers. I mean, Iceland took a real tumble. Rarely in these studies do you see 4.8 points down. 
Australia 2.9 point, uh, 2.9 points down. Uh, you see now the United States uh, is in 25th place. They are tied with Mauritius. I've been to Mauritius. Mauritius also not quite as tax friendly as the UAE. A tax friendly place. Again, open immigration place. Imagine, and somehow they have the U.S. at 25 and Mauritius at 26, even though they have the exact same score, 70.6. By the way, that's barely in the mostly free category. Now, if you're watching this from Gary, Indiana, you have my condolences, first of all. But you're probably not thinking that your country would be tied with Mauritius. You might think Mauritius wouldn't be so doing so well, but would you think that the U.S. is holding on by a claw to uh, mostly free, because the next category is moderately free. And by the way, that's where the UK went down to. They're now 28th at 69.9. They've moved for the first time with a big drop into moderately free. Is 28th out of 172 the worst? No, but I thought these countries were the freest countries in the world. We waved the flag. I'm not saying these countries are terrible. I'm saying most people who live in them think they're number one, and they're not. That's the issue we're trying to address here. We're not trying to put them at the Syria level. We're trying to put them at the level they actually are. Uh, so losers were those big countries. We're seeing uh, growth from those tax-friendly, immigration-friendly countries. Imagine that. That's economic freedom. Australia came in at number 13. Canada at number 16. The U.S. at 25th, as we said. The U.K. dropped to 28th, as we said, down to moderately free. Who are the winners? Uh, Taiwan increased. Uh, they are now way up at the tippy top. Uh, the UAE increased, now beating the United States. Remember, not so long ago, when you turn on late night television, for example, the United States, and they'd be laughing about Dubai, they'd be laughing at Abu Dhabi. They're not laughing so much now if they're reading this report, because the UAE is now ahead of uh, many EU countries, I mean, way ahead of countries like France, not far behind some of the, the stalwarts of the EU, but it's above the US. You have formerly communist countries uh, even higher than that. Now you've seen countries like Georgia, uh, which have gone down. The tax policies in Georgia have not changed. So for the average small business owner, the average freelancer, uh, the average person who wants to use their one year tourist visa, uh, your life hasn't really changed. Um, but for bigger businesses, uh, things have changed. But imagine, did you think that post-communist countries and a, and a speck in the desert would be beating the United States? Did I think that in 1996? Well, you know, we sat around and said maybe that would happen. I don't think too many other people did. And there it is. Other winners, Uruguay, as you mentioned, Israel, big jump, Qatar, uh, Jamaica of all places, Costa Rica, tax-friendly, immigration-friendly. Vietnam is moving up. Uh, they are not... Uh, you know, so high. They're still number 72 in the moderately free category. Hey, listen, uh, the UK does rank higher, but they are still in the same category, Vietnam and the UK. They are both moderately free. Montenegro, big jump this year. Uh, and then Tanzania. Tanzania hanging on by the skin of their teeth. They're at 60. That puts them at the very bottom of moderately free, 79.9 down to 60. There's a typo here. Uh, what we're seeing in countries like the United States, by the way, uh, property rights went down. Now, let's be honest. Still at 94.7. I don't think too many people think that their property is being taken from them in the U.S. Unless you happen to have gold in a safe deposit box that some criminal was using the same facility. Or unless you're depositing cash from your burrito stand, then your property rights are nothing. But for 94.7% of people, your property rights are fine. Uh, judicial effectiveness, government integrity, those are all down. Uh, government integrity, 73.4. I'm surprised. Even I am a little bit surprised. Tax burden, of course, is down. Government spending is in the tank. Uh, fiscal health. I don't understand this. This is a typo or something. The U.S. is literally at zero. Fiscal health, zero. I was I said, are other people at zero? No, they're at 78. To, zero. Fiscal health of zero. Uh, business freedom is down. Labor freedom is up. Monetary freedom is down. Uh, again, let me be clear. I am because okay, people are going to complain. They're going to complain. I am not saying the United States is the worst place to do business. I am saying there are better places to do business. And just as I say, if you're going to move, you might as well move. If you're going to move from California to Nevada, just, just move like where you can really get the most juice out of it. You know, move to Puerto Rico, move to Panama, really get those tax savings in. You know, have an adventure. If you're going to set up a business, why not set it up in the best place? 
people, uh, you see all over Instagram, oh, you couldn't start this kind of business in the Netherlands. I had to come to the U.S. Uh, you should have gone to the UAE. You should have gone to Taiwan. You should have gone to Ireland, number three ranked. So those are the winners, including some countries you probably haven't thought most about. Biggest gains from the almost moderately free Belize and Dominica, which are places to plant other flags. And so let me be clear about this. Uh, we don't talk a lot about Belize. It's tax friendly. It's immigration friendly. More towards retirement age people. Uh, but it's English speaking. It's in the same time zone. Like Belize is a place that some people like to go to. Belize would be a place where you can live. Maybe open a small bank account is what we call a tunnel, where you can always put more money in if you have to, but you're not going to move your entire net worth to Belize or anywhere close. Dominica, citizenship by investment, the second passport. It's part of a passport portfolio. You're not going to open a bank account in Dominica unless you have your offshore company in some uh, jurisdiction where it's hard for you to get bank accounts and you don't have a lot of money to put in. So if you had a BVI company with $10,000 to put in, Maybe, you know, a Dominica bank is the one you want, but it's not because that's your favorite bank in the world. It's because, you know, you don't have a million dollars for the Swiss bank or $500,000 for the Liechtenstein bank. So those, you know, countries, those are two big gainers that we talk about as flags. But understand, economics should beget economics. If I'm looking at where to bank, Singapore's right up there, freest economy in the world. Switzerland, certainly more pomposity, higher fees, more of a name brand. I mean, the banking works. Ireland, things generally work. Taiwan, not as much experience. I've been there. Apparently things work. So I'm looking at those are the places to put my money. Do I want to put my money in the 25th best place or in the first best place? I'm not saying to move to Singapore. I'm saying, where do I want to put my money? If I want to start a business now, for the average small business person, I'll take the UAE in a free zone over Singapore because if I'm not going to live in the country, I'd I'll take 0% tax over the teens. So again, you have to kind of look at the entire facts here. Uh, but I see a lot of countries that are going down. So what do I take from this? Where I'm at a bank, we've talked about that. I'm going to bank at a place where the banks are the safest. The banks are, again, transactional and pragmatic. So where am I going to bank? I'm going to bank in a place that's free. I'm not going to you know, bank in a place where I have difficulties. Where am I going to invest? Quite frankly, as someone who lives a very tax-efficient lifestyle, I love investing in Singapore. Why? No capital gains tax, no dividend tax. So if I invest in a Singapore bank stock, uh, there's one that yields 5%. That's a tax-free 5% because there's no dividend tax there. And I live in a lifestyle where I'm not going to have that particular dividend tax. My dividends aren't taxed either. If I buy a U.S. bank stock paying 2.5%, uh, I'm going to pay somewhere between 15 and 30%, depending on my situation, in tax uh, to the U.S., where my yield might get into 2. I've 25 x my yield if I'm living a tax-efficient lifestyle by investing in Singapore stocks. Do I think Singapore is the number one growth story of the world? No, it's already the freest economy. Everyone wants to go there. It costs tens of millions of dollars to get an investor visa to move there as a passive investor. Yes, I will choose, you know, Cambodia, which is down here on the list. Cambodia's at 110. Um, I will invest there and, you know, I will uh, overlook uh, the property rights issue here. And I'll say, listen, Cambodia has been a top performer. I'm willing to take a little bit more risk because the yields are outsized. But for the bulk of my portfolio, I'm going to invest in these top places. Ireland does not have as much of a market, uh, but there are Irish listed ETFs, for example, for folks who aren't. Uh, U.S. taxpayers that are more tax efficient. Um, so, you you know, I can look at this and say, OK, uh, the Netherlands, I do have some Dutch companies in my portfolio. They're more free. Um, and then do business. Where do I want to do business? If we look at the UAE, uh, they are up on a number of metrics. Business freedom is up. Monetary freedom is up. Property rights are up. Uh, there's some areas for improvement there. Uh, but at least their fiscal health, I mean, 96.4 out of 100, that's pretty strong when the U.S. is at zero. And so if I'm going to start a business somewhere, uh, Hong Kong is no longer on this list. They no longer include it. It used to always be in the free category. But you can kind of go through this list and figure out where you want to be. What I don't look at this list for is where I want to live. Argentina is at number 144. Doug Casey speaking at Nomad Capitals Live uh, three years in a row has said, hey, I lived in Argentina. I'm the rich white guy. They kind of leave me alone. Never said move all your money to Argentina. 
Maybe you buy a property for your own enjoyment, uh, but you're not investing in a bunch of Argentine stocks. But where you live is different. Now, you don't want to live in a war zone. You don't want to live in a place where there's mass expropriation. But listen, there's expropriation in Western countries, uh, in not only of property, but of things like retirement accounts. And so if you want to figure out the proper mix of where to bank, uh, you know, how to at least the, the investment infrastructure, uh, where to be a citizen, because by the way, U.S. citizens who set up a company overseas have more restrictions. Where should you be a citizen instead? Should you live somewhere else to take advantage of lower taxes? Right? All these things are questions that you want to be internationally diversified. Nomad capitalist does not tell you where to invest. We don't pick stocks. Uh, we do have a network of experts from tax to real estate uh, to uh, everything else that you need to either move overseas and reduce your taxes and diversify or stay at home and diversify and be ready for whatever happens. You can go to nomadcapitalist.com and learn about what we do. It is not a one-size-fits-all service. It is bespoke for everybody. It's very human-oriented. Uh, it is architect and general contractor. We plug you into our entire network of experts that we've been sourcing for many years now. And it's not something where you just go and get a passport. It is an entire solution where everything is designed to work together as a puzzle. Because if you bank in Singapore and you're an American citizen, that's not going to give you the investment access. You'll need to go and get a separate brokerage account. If you're a U.S. citizen banking in Switzerland, for example, how are you going to you know, report that uh, you know, bank account? Uh, what other opportunities does that open up? I mean, there's just so many interlocking factors here that we help you figure out. But the bottom line is four countries are in the free category in an index that I've been following for years. Uh, many Western countries are falling. A number of interesting countries are rising. And you should take advantage of that, not only for more profit, to make sure that you're as safe as possible. You don't want to be 25th most safe. You'd like to be first or second or third most safe. That's what we help people figure out every day. Not only figure out, but implement. And you can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com to take advantage of these free countries. Mm -hmm.